In this episode, I'm going to explain the difference between a GraphQL query resolver and a GraphQL resolver. So if you remember back in our schema here, we had one query defined and that basically allowed us to return a bank account linked to a bank account ID. And how we actually match that in code was, there's an interface and it's called GraphQL Query Resolver. And this acts as a marker interface. So the framework will pick up all of the classes, in this case, Bank Account Resolver, that implements the GraphQL Query Resolver marker interface. It then looks for a matching signature of a method to the GraphQL defined query. So here we have a matching bank account response. Here we accept in the ID, which is passed in, and we have a matching um, query name. So the method name matches the query name. So here we have a match, and it will directly execute this method whenever we call this query. Now you can have many GraphQL query resolvers. You don't just have to have one. So you can group the queries into logical groups and have a different GraphQL query resolver implementation for each. Now, if I go back to this, you'll see that whenever we request this query, the bank account query resolver is executed. Now, what we want to do is say if our services in the back end evolve and we no longer have the client information within the bank accounts database or data source, and we now have to retrieve this from an external service. Well, sometimes we might not even need it because sometimes the clients don't actually request that information and they just want the bank account and say, for example, the currency. So we need to take that into consideration as well. So this is where the GraphQL resolver now comes into place. So instead of grabbing everything up front like we had before, we now have to re well first I'm going to refactor the packaging here. So previously I had everything in resolver, but now it's going to evolve and I'm going to put this into the bank.query. So I'm going to now create another resolver, which is going to be a GraphQL resolver, and it's going to be a client resolver. Because this and this is going to be the class where we actually retrieve the client information from an external web service or database or another database or somewhere else not linked to the bank accounts. And of course, what we need to do is come in and implement. And this time, so it's a GraphQL resolver. And what we need to do is implement the GraphQL resolver with type bank account because it's going to resolve fields within a bank account. So here we're going to resolve the client in the client resolver. So it's not a query resolver, it's a resolver. And inside here, we must again have a matching method to the client. So here what we do is we return client and the method is the field name. So the field name must match the method name. And inside, of course, we return, we accept the bank account because that's what's going to be passed from the parent. So you can think of the bank account, it's going to resolve, and then it's going to pass itself into its child resolver if you request this data. So here we just add a wee log line requesting client data for bank account ID, get ID. And here we are going to return the client information. So we no longer return the client within the bank account resolver, but now we return it within the client resolver. And I want to move uh, the package. So refactor 
Da, 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 we need a file. Usually there's move. Move class. And I'm going to move this into the bank package. So now it's clear that we have the resolvers in here, the query resolvers, and the normal resolvers one level below. Just trying to keep things a wee bit tidier. So now if we stop this and we run this, well, now we should have multiple resolvers executing when we request them. So everything started fine. And now when we request this, first of all, you'll see we're breakpointing here with the NIO executor one on the bank account resolver. So that's the, the first query resolver. And we play that through. And now we're breakpointing on the client resolver. And you can see the bank account the parent of from the query the, from the sorry from the previous parent query resolver it's passed down into here and we can do the fetch for that client id for the bank account id sorry so i can play that through so as you can see we've now executed two different resolvers and here from the logs now what happens if you don't actually request this client information well you'll see here i break point once i play that through and that's it. We don't actually request the client data because the client or the user never actually asked for that client information. So therefore, we the resolvers will only execute what is actually asked for from the client, which is really, really cool. So one other thing I should mention is now as we resolve the client data from another resolver, which is simulating requests from another web service. Well, at any time this could fail. So if we go back to our query, you'll see that inside the bank account, we have a client and the client has not null. So if we return null here or we fail or, or we, we return null back, well, the whole query will fail because we cannot return null in the client. So at this point, you may want to consider making this client op client variable or field null. Therefore, if an exception occurs and you can't get that data, you can still at least return the bank account data and everything else with the null client. And then using a partial response, we can indicate to the client as a response that client data is unavailable rather than it does not exist. So that's, that's how you kind of will kind of evolve your schema to protect against this. So thank you very much. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can use partial responses within GraphQL and return errors along with the data. Thank you and see you in the next episode, guys.